Hello. This week we start a whole new Sefer and the Sedra Shmos. Our Sedra opens with the start of the Jews' Egyptian enslavement. God narrated in the beginning, A new king arose over Egypt who did not know of Yosef. He said to his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more numerous and stronger than we are. Get ready. Let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they increase and a war befall us, and they join our enemies and depart from the land. So they appointed tax collectors over the Jews to afflict them with burdens, and they built store cities for Pharaoh, namely Pitom and Ramses. In his commentary to the phrase, let us deal shrewdly with them, the Ramban explained the background to Pharaoh's nefarious plans against the Jewish people, worried about the possibility that the Egyptian Jews would act treacherously against Egypt. Pharaoh and his advisors wanted to wipe the Jewish people out. Another genocide, or the first one probably. Pyro and his advisors did not decide to smite the Jewish people with a sword in a grand act of genocide because that would be viewed by the Egyptian people as a great betrayal to a nation who had immigrated to Egypt through the invitation of the first Pyro when he invited Yaakov. The Jewish people were, were greatly admired by the average Egyptian. Even the common people wouldn't give consent to Pyro to annihilate all the Jews. In addition, the Jews were numerous and mighty and would fight back in a great war. Pyro instead advised that the Egyptians should act shrewdly, so that the Egyptian Jews would not perceive that Pyro was acting out of hate towards the Jewish people with plans to annihilate them. Pyro recognized that he had to act clandestinely and in stages to have the Egyptian people see the Jews as unequal to them and worthy of discrimination. The first thing Pyro did was levy a tax only on the Jewish people, for it was common for foreigners to pay a tax to the king. Even King Solomon charged a tax to foreigners in Israel. From there, Pyro forced the Jews to work for the state, first for minimal wages, and then without remuneration. By this point, the Egyptians viewed the Jews as less than them, and were ready to enslave, torture, and commit infanticide against the Jewish people. Pyro's plan worked perfectly, and the genocide against the Jews enjoyed wide Egyptian support. As a dictator with complete control over his people, why did Pyro need the approval of his people to come after the Jews? In truth, all leaders are only as strong as their followers allow them to be. The minute followers decide to leave their leader, they deplete their leader of all power and control. Leaders will do anything to keep the people's approval, for without it they are nothing. And all leaders will do anything to keep the people's approval, to keep their power, including giving up on any moral values they might have once held. This explains the motivation behind Pyro's actions in this week's Sedra. Shabbat Shalom.